Hey friends, welcome back to our channel. Have you heard people complaining that they cannot have coffee because when they have coffee, uh, their heartbeat raises, they could even be sweaty and just overall very uncomfy. But they don't have the same phenomena when they have tea, even though tea also have a caffeine. I think today's topic might provide a possible explanation for this phenomena. If you're new here, hello, my name is Jen. Phil and I run a tea shop specializing in fine tasting great Chinese tea. In this channel, we share videos about various teas, uh, how is tea made, or how to make tea at home, and much, much more. So if you are also a tea lover, please consider subscribing. Without further ado, let's get started. L-theanine was first abstracted by a Japanese schooler in 1950 from Jokuru, a Japanese green tea. It was considered a unique non-protein amino acid that only found in tea. But now we know uh, there are few other plants, uh, mushrooms that has L-theanine in them. L-theanine is highly water soluble. So when we brew tea, we can easily access the L-theanine in those tea leaves. It has a gentle, sweet and umami taste. So it helps improve the uh, flavor as well as the aroma of tea. Many people get to know L-theanine because of its amazing health benefit. It boosts immune system, it suppresses cancer cellular activities, it protects the nerve system, help lower blood pressure, and improve this quality of our sleep. It's also a very, very powerful antioxidant. What's fascinating is its relationship with the caffeine. It's actually a love and hate relationship. We know that caffeine uh, raises our heartbeat, keep us awake. Well, L-theanine has the very opposite effect. It calms, soothes, and helps us uh, sleep. And uh, caffeine also raises our cortisol level while L-theanine helps lower it down, which when they work together, they basically keep cortisol level stable, which is very important to, to, for our health. L-theanine not only has counter effect on caffeine, it also works with caffeine. Study shows that with a proper ratio with caffeine and L-theanine, it actually help improve our sense of uh, focus, uh, make us alert, but not agitated. Back to tea. L-theanine is made by the root system and is transported to the leaves. So within the one tea plant, the younger new leaves will have higher L-theanine levels compared to the lower, more mature leaves. There are other factors that affect the level of L-theanine. For example, the cultivars. Small leaf cultivars will have more L-theanine than big leaf cultivars. And even within the small leaf cultivars, there are many, many different types of plants. Uh, certain ones are known for their phenomenally high L-theanine levels. For example, Anji Bai Cha, the highest L-theanine level uh, tea cultivar. Longjing 43, it's a Longjing cultivar, also has a very high L-theanine. Overall, those uh, pale leaf tea plants have higher uh, L-theanine compared to regular tea plants. For example, uh, Bai Ji Guan, it's a rock tea cultivar. That one also has higher L-theanine. Another major factor to consider is tea type. The process affects how much L-theanine left in the tea leaves for us. For example, white tea is considered to have the highest level of L-theanine, uh, followed by green tea and yellow tea, while dark tea has the least because of uh, its uh, post-fermentation process. Tea seasons also plays a part. Uh, spring tea would have more than uh, summer tea or autumn tea, especially summer tea would have significantly lower level. The higher altitude 
tea will have more L-theanine than the lower altitude tea. Uh, overall, the better the environment, the more L-theanine it will be in the tea leaves. While the purpose of this video is not to encourage you to drink the most healthy tea, life is long and there are so many days for us to try different food and different teas. It's not necessarily only about the most healthy tea. And on the other hand, is there a, a tea that is the most healthy? It's actually very hard to say. L-theanine, for example, is actually a key factor for the tea plant's photosynthesis, and it's a source for the plant to make a catechin. So, you know, catechin, EGCG, also very, very popular, uh, super, super food, healthy, all that jazz. So when you have a higher L-theanine level, it means you have less of catechin, or you have a higher catechin level means L-theanine is pretty much breakdown. So there is a balance and just, uh, you know, just like we always say, enjoy tea. Sometimes some people mention that they would also have that, uh, the, the over-caffeinated reaction to tea. Is there any way to minimize it uh, while still enjoy the benefit of tea? So a few things, first is, uh, <laughs> make sure you have food. If, if you are more sensitive to caffeine and stuff, make sure you have uh, you know, some food in your stomach, empty stomach, and drink a strong or a big quantity of tea is prone to having this kind of phenomena, low blood pressure or over-caffeinated. Another thing that often overlooked is uh, choose higher quality tea. So if you watch our video about the caffeine level in tea as well and combine with this video, you probably already figure out the higher quality the tea is, the more um, L-theanine in tea and the less caffeine. And the lower the quality of the tea, the more caffeine, the less L-theanine. So to mitigate that over-caffeinated effect, you could try to uh, have a little bit of step up in the tea you choose and see if that helps. Thank you for joining me today. If you find this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up. It will really help us grow. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Until next time, keep steeping.